What's up, everybody? Dan here with Dan and Sarah Makers, and we are coming in back at you with another Tool Tuesday. As you can see in front of me, I've got a selection of mostly Makita, but one DeWalt, cordless circular saw. In the past, I did kind of a head-to-head -head competition with this Makita saw here and this DeWalt saw. These both are um, basically like a skill saw style worm drive type saw. Um, in that competition, I did a cutting challenge to see who could cut more of these two and a quarter by two and a quarter boards here. So you can look that up in our previous video. The Makita actually won. It has two 18 volt batteries, so 36 volt, and this is a uh, 60 volt max system here. I don't know if the DeWalt just overheated and couldn't keep up because I was cutting pretty fast, but even after waiting for quite a while, it didn't continue cutting on that battery. But what I wanna talk about is this particular saw here. This is a different style of Makita um, 36 volt circular saw. They're both the seven and a quarter inch diameter blade. So that's the standard um, saw blade that everyone kind of grew up with and is familiar with. Um, so I really like that size. I grew up learning to frame on the West Coast. So skill saws like this, this style of saw is what we kind of grew up with and it's just comfortable for me. I didn't really use what what I refer to as a sidewinder. I think these are more common or popular on the East Coast, um, but the blades on the right side of this style saw and the blades on the left side of the skill saw. So for me being left-handed, it gets the blade out away from me and um, just for me, it feels more comfortable uh, to use that style of saw. Some people like this style of saw where it's more of a square base, it's not as long rectangular. These take a little bit more energy or strength to hold out in front of you just because all the weight's way forward and your hand's at the very back, whereas this one's your hand's kind of up on top and a little bit easier to control. So we'll talk about this saw real quick and some of the features. I wanna talk about the batteries first. This uses two 18 volt batteries and the batteries themselves are rated at different amp hours. You can get really skinny ones all the way up to the bigger ones, the real high end ones, which are not offered with any tools to my knowledge are the six amp hour, but five amp hour is pretty typical. Because it uses two individual batteries, you get 36 volts at five amp hours. So that's a pretty nice feature of using two individual batteries for uh, the Makita system. There are multiple different brands out there, whether it's DeWalt with their 60 volt max, if you're running it in a tool that's designed for 18 volts, you're actually getting really good amp hours. You might get that 12 amp hours or nine amp hours, whatever the battery's rated for, but you start getting it into a 60 volt tool, divide those amp hours by three, and that's what you're actually running at. So you might only be running at four amp hours in a uh, 60 volt max tool. Um, but because it is two separate batteries and they're both rated for whatever amp hour they're rated for, you get a true 36 volt, five amp hour tool out of this. Hitachi, which became Metabo HPT, they have their new 36 volt multi-volt system. So if you put that 36 volt battery in a 36 volt tool, you'll get 2.5 amp hours. If you take that same battery and put it in an 18 volt tool, you'll get five amp hours. And they actually say that in their advertising. So that's kind of nice. DeWalt, not so much. But anyways, um, so that's one thing about these batteries that I like. This is a rather rectangular saw. It's got a much bigger base width-wise than the skill saw style of Makita. The blade is on the right-hand side. You can use either a blade wrench or an Allen wrench, which is stored on board for changing out your blade, so that's nice. The base is magnesium, so it's a fairly lightweight saw. When I say lightweight, um, when I actually put this bear tool on the scale, it came in at eight pounds, 2.3 ounces. So. It's not extremely light, but with batteries, it comes up to about 10 pounds. The front of the saw table here has nice clear markings, but they're only painted on. They're not actually engraved or any depressions. So over time, those might wear off and you won't have any markings. On the skill saw style, those are actually etched in and then they're painted over. I like the fact that on our angle and depth of drive or depth of uh, cut, gauge, there's actually a little bit of a red painted mark here to help you identify that. So on our angle adjustment, we've got just a 
lever on front that you pull over. And what's cool about this saw is it has this adjustment knob on the front, and this will give us three preset stops. So we go 22 and a half, 45, and we click it one more, and that brings us to our maximum angle of 56 degrees. So if you're gonna do a lot of repet repetitive cuts, it's nice because you can put it in at 22 and a half and you're not sitting there trying to, you know, adjust your table back and forth and you're on the wrong edge or center line or right edge of that mark on this gauge. As far as our depth of cut, we've got a fairly long handle to get this uh, lever out past the batteries and the blade guard. I don't know, it seems a little bit long, so maybe it would be a problem, but I'm not sure. So you've got that lever, and then the actual depth of cut, it's kind of okay to see down in between the handle and the battery compartment, you can see it there. But this particular one is just a sticker with lines and numbers printed on it. And if you actually rub your finger over the top of it hard enough, you can feel like additional lines underneath. So maybe they cast in a depth of drive, or sorry, not depth of drive, depth of cut um, index on the actual saw guard housing or blade guard housing, but I'm not sure. And I don't know if I want to peel that off. Maybe it's metric, who knows? Maybe there's um, centimeters and millimeters underneath that uh, sticker that's in English, SAE, I believe it is. Um, as far as the blade guard, it's got the same exact kind of uh, profile to raise the guard as the um, skill saw style. So I, I've been okay with that. It's, it hasn't been too bad. Um, but you do have a handle on the side. It's kind of small. Might be nice if it stuck out just a little bit further. But you do have that option. On the front here, you'll notice there are two holes. That is for an optional rafter hook. It does not come with a rafter hook, but you can screw it on there and use that to uh, hang your saw. There's also an eyelet behind the handle here, which is good for lanyards. So if you need to have um, tool lanyards when you're working overhead, that's another feature. And then finally, we have our double battery index here that you can push on to um, check your battery life. This saw is relatively open on the back side here, so if you want to push your batteries out, you can get your hand in here and push them out. That's one thing on the skill saw style where it's actually really challenging to get your hand underneath there and pull the batteries out. Sometimes they get stuck in there with sawdust. The housing is all the uh, uh, impact nylon reinforced plastic or whatever here, whereas the uh, other skill saw style, it's an aluminum housing. So it's got our blade lock there, just behind here for uh, locking our blade when we want to disconnect it. And then it's also got an optional rip fence guide bar slot here with a set screw to lock it off. So all in all, it's not too bad. We'll talk about some of the things that Makita says. We haven't tested it. I have never actually plugged this into batteries and I have never actually used it to make any cuts. So the first cut I will ever use it for will be on camera. So kind of excited about that. All these saws that I had on the table to begin with, they're all made in China. Not the greatest thing in my opinion, but that's how they are. This particular saw, which is the XSH06, if I haven't said it already, the bare tool on Amazon, you can get it between $170 and $200 just for the bare tool. No bag, no charger, no batteries. With a bag charger and two five amp hour batteries, it's about $350 at some online retailers. This particular saw here, um, Makita claims that it will cross cut 610 SPF or spruce pine fir 2x4s with two 5 amp hour batteries. So they actually specify what it is. And like I said, it comes in at 8 pounds, 2.3 ounces. The skill saw style of Makita, they say that it'll cut 558. So this will cut um, about 40, 50 more 2x4s cross cut wise, supposedly with its capacity. This is 6,000 RPMs, that one's rated at 5,100 RPM. So I don't know if it has something to do with the RPMs. Lower RPMs, I would think, would be more torque. So that might be something um, that might be going on there. So I am going to put the Irwin Marathon blade on, which is slightly wider. The kerf is slightly wider, so it's cutting out more material per pass than the factory Makita blade, which is a much narrower kerf 
cuts really nice, but because I used the Irwin Marathon blade on the other two saws in the previous test, that would only be fair. I'm using the same wood that I used in the previous test, that same dimensional material out of the same truckloads of stuff that I got it from. Um, so it will probably be a little bit more draw on the saw, might not get as many cuts, but at least we're comparing apples to apples and not apples and oranges with specialty blades. Um, Makita, if you look at your batteries now, I am going to use some of the batteries that are actually have the cells, they'll actually list it out as where the cells are made or the actual, like, what are they, 18060 or whatever um, <laughs> battery cells that they put in these. These that we'll be using are, the cells are made in Korea and the batteries put together for their processed in Vietnam. We'll use those. They also have uh, the cells made in M Malaysia and then the batteries put together in Vietnam and then they have cells made in Singapore and put together in China. So we'll use the Korean made cells. Um, I don't know if they're Samsung, but they might be because Samsung is a big uh, manufacturer of those batteries. As far as the material here, no, it's not two by four. So it's not quite the same dimension and volume of wood we're cutting with each cut. These are two and a quarter by two and a quarter. So they're about 5.06 square inches per cut. A two by four, which is three and a half inches by one and a half inches is 5.25. So we're 0.2 inches, square inches less of material per cut. So, you know, if they're claiming that we can cut 610, I'm gonna have to mark more of these because right now I stopped at 400. So we'll see if we make it through 400. If everything was correct in advertisement world, we'd probably cut more like 700 of these because of that little difference in area. So I'm gonna change out the blade, clamp these down, and I'm gonna start cutting. All right, so a little over 300 cuts now. The blade break is not engaging. I'm running it pretty fast. So as things heat up, obviously that's not working 100% as designed. Same thing happened with the other Makita when I ran it. So we'll see how it goes. We're, uh, we're probably at about 310 cuts. So right now, I'm pushing the safety on the trigger, nothing. It's either thermal overload or something happened. Saw doesn't feel too hot. 
the batteries are kind of warm. The gauge on top, one battery light is flashing at one bar and the other is solid at one bar. So that was 325, 24, 23, 22, 21, 20, 19. About 318 cuts so far. We'll give it just a minute to see, uh, to be fair, if it will kick back on. The DeWalt also had problems like that, where after quite a few cuts, it kind of kicked out. And I was kind of thinking it would keep cutting if we let it cool down for a few minutes. And I did, I let it cool down for probably 10, 15 minutes and still nothing. Somebody will probably put in the comments, oh yeah, you have to let them cool down for 30 minutes. Again, if I'm doing production framing and my saw overheats and I have to sit there for 30 minutes for it to cool down or 10 minutes or 15 minutes, I'm not happy with that. I would rather have the batteries overheat, pull the batteries out, let them cool down, throw in a new set and keep going. So the motor, the housing, something, they should have big enough heat sinks on it, some kind of way of helping to reduce uh, the uh, motor from overheating on the tool itself. So let's try this, I'll push the button. Nothing, the LED light comes on, but nothing else. So that definitely is not the 600 and, let's see, let's look at my cheat sheet. Definitely not the 610 cross cuts in the two by four if we're at 318 cuts. So again, let it sit for another minute or two, see where we're at. Um, I definitely have some opinions about it now, but most of the time, or most of that is due to me being left-handed, you know, just this awful, horrible left-handed person that's a ginger. But <laughs> if you're a left-handed carpenter, if you're a left-handed person that is looking at tools, maybe this isn't the one for you just because of the blade on the right side. All right, we got 318 cuts made. Still nothing happening. Might still be hot. Let's see if the uh, if we trade out some new batteries, if that helps, if it's just the batteries. <coughs> Seems to be the case. Um, okay, my takeaways. If you're left-handed, this is not the saw for you because typically you'll be cutting so that your material that you're holding and supporting with your right hand is here and you're cutting with your left hand. If you're cutting little slivers off, the sliver has to be wide enough to push the guard back on the left side of the blade, the inside of the saw, and cut. But as soon as that piece drops off, this drops back down and it hooks, it hooks your work piece right here. So I noticed that was an issue and it was also kicking the uh, scrap forward and kind of being a little bit of a pain to cut. The Maybe I don't have big enough hands, maybe my hands are too big enough, big, I don't know. But my hand wants to sit a little bit further back and so as you're cutting, it's a very upright position. You have to have your hand up like this to hit this thumb switch. And as your hand starts to slide back a little bit, that thumb switch gets further and further away and kind of hard to depress and keep activated. So I think that might be, maybe the handle needs to be just a little bit canted up a little bit, but then again, that might just be me and my personality, the height of the work that we were at, maybe it was a little bit too high, maybe it should have been a little bit lower, so my hand was up at a better angle to maintain the same grip the entire time and be able to keep my thumb on that. Um, yeah, it, if you're used to the Sidewinder saw, a right side blade like this, that's great. Um, I'm not, so it wasn't super comfortable for me. A right-handed person would be cutting on this side. Blade visibility on cut line is kind of tight. You have to kind of get around here to be able to see through there. But again, if that's what you're used to, that's fine. With the blade on the right side, the printing faces out. So on a normal skill saw with the blade on the left, the printing always goes in. The blade nut on these is a standard, over the top to the right is tight, over the top to the left is loose. So it's a standard thread, unlike a left saw, left side saw blade, where it's reverse thread, just because you want that blade to tighten the screw as it's rotating. Um, same thing with the other Makita. The uh, automatic brake, it kind of went out after the saw got hot. <laughs> It's now working again. The other Makita that I used for the test, it works fine now. Um, so 
overall, it's not too bad for me personally. I'm not a big fan of this style, but I do have to say I can get in there and I can get the batteries out really easily compared to the other saw. These are the batteries we use for the test. Let's see if they've cooled down. Nope, still doesn't want to run them. So it's still flashing. So these batteries probably got nice and warm. So anyways, that does it for today's Tool Tuesday. We got to torture test another saw. I'll put some of the comparisons here on the end just so you see which saw did how many cuts. Um, it's always a good thing to see, but honestly, how many people are going to be making 300 cross cuts like that that fast? It's probably not that common, even in production framing. Um, so that's a pretty good number of cuts. You can always follow us on Instagram at Dan Sarah Makers. And be sure to like, subscribe, comment, share these videos on YouTube. Thumbs up them. That helps us a lot. And until next time, this is Dan. We hope these videos inspire you to get out there and do something. Have a good one. Bye.